Hey everybody, I'm Carrie, American Arbitrage, and we're going to go into this Deseret Industry thrift store and see what we can find that's undervalued, that we can place on eBay or whatnot and make a profit. This is what I do full time. This is what I love to do. Let's go see what we can find. So I've been reselling for almost 12 years and it's weird. Everything's kind of cyclical. I get interested in stuff, certain types of items, you know, every now and then. And shoes and clothing have been something that I've been getting into. Yet again, there's been many seasons where I have, and maybe this is for good. Maybe I'm going to start making uh, shoes and clothing a bigger part of my on online resale business. So these kind of look like uh, Stan Smith's, the Adidas, the green ones, which I have a pair of for sale on eBay. But these are the Puma ones. They're $15. You know what? These could have been worth it. I really didn't investigate them too much. Puma, I don't believe is like as big of a brand as it used to be. I strongly considered these um, um, Nike shoes right here. I put them in my cart, ultimately didn't um, get them, but I probably could have cleaned those up and got at least double my money on them, but ultimately just weren't interesting enough for me to want to pick up. They didn't seem like they had enough upside. Within the shoe category, I'm kind of niched down. I'm basically focusing on athletic shoes, running shoes, sneakers, basketball shoes, just sports stuff. These looked really nice, but $25 made me want to put them back. But they were in really nice condition. They might have been worth a little bit more, but I didn't bother even looking them up with that price. Asics, I know some Asics can be decent. But I don't know enough about Asics, this particular brand, to know if these ones were special. Um, and they weren't, if it was like five bucks, I might have taken a chance, but I believe they wanted $15 on those. At first glance, I thought these might have been Tom's or Sperry's, but they're just a lower in brand than that. So definitely not going to pick those up. I like New Balance. Whenever I can find them, I like to look them up to see if they're worth my time. This was a fairly decent looking pair. Um, I think. Uh, the reason why I didn't end up even putting these in my cart is they didn't have a price. That was probably a mistake. I should have put those in my cart. I might have got them for 5 or $8, which at this particular DI, it seems like around 6 or 8 is the lowest they'll go. In Utah, um, sometimes I can get these shoes for like 3 or 4 bucks. So every DI is a little different, but they seem overall to be less expensive than others. This seemed to be yellowing on the side right there. Those are, uh, I forgot the type of Nikes those are, but they're fairly popular. I was pretty excited when I saw these. These are Puma shoes, Fenty by Rihanna. Uh, they're trainers. They're pretty nice looking shoes. Um, they were $12. I was definitely wanting to get these. I did a little research on them. I haven't found these before. And it looks like I can get somewhere between maybe 30 and maybe $50 plus shipping on them. So that's a good, solid pair of shoes. Some of you may listen to my podcast with NC Picker and Commonwealth Picker. Um, and I oftentimes joke about the fact that I have three degrees. Um, but that's really what my nature is. Not that I'm special and I have three degrees. That really doesn't matter that much. But I'm super curious about stuff. I think that's why I ended up getting three degrees is I just wanted to learn other things. And, you know, that's served me well and also probably been a negative in my life at times. And I think that's what I love about reselling and like looking at shoes and trying to learn new things is there's just always so much to learn. So many new categories, subcategories, subcategories of those categories to get into and learn. There's just a never ending amount of things that you can learn to flip and resell. It's probably one of my favorite um, aspects of reselling. I'm going to go check out the jersey section now. First jersey I see is a Khalil Mack jersey uh, back when he played for the Raiders. I don't know if he played for the Raiders when they were in Vegas, but he's on the Bears now. That's overpriced, unfortunately. This also really cool Super Bowl jersey, Todd Gurley. Um, I'm not sure. I guess Todd Gurley was on the team when they went in 2019 to the Super Bowl. He's unfortunately not on the team anymore. A lot of times when these players leave, unless they're legends of the team, their jerseys, you know, you can make a few dollars on them, but you don't want to overpay on them because they may not have that much of a market, unfortunately. Here's a, another example of that. This actually, one of the best players of all time, LeBron James Cleveland jersey. That'll still sell at the right price, but it has to be pretty inexpensive. I'd have to spend maybe $5 tops on that to feel comfortable buying it to flip. If you've watched my videos for a long time, you know I typically don't like to spend too much time going through the clothing aisle or through the racks and stuff, but lately I've kind of been into it. It's kind of tripping me out. Um, not every day. This day, I was kind of into it. I thought that might have been San Diego Chargers there for a second, but it was uh, looks like a high school team. I'm just looking for anything that I can flip. And what I love to look for in the clothing section in particular is sports-related stuff. I love sports. So if I can find a jersey or a, you know, like a cool vintage Carl Banks, you know, Chicago Bear pullover or something, that's what I would love to find. So that's what I'm looking for for the most part, but I'm trying to stretch myself and look for good 
um, good, good brands that I can sell that aren't necessarily sports related. This was a pretty good day at the Goodwill. I actually saw a video of Sonny at this Goodwill or one of these local Goodwills here in Vegas, and he did really well. So it inspired me to come out here. This is a Nike dry fit UNLV um, polo. I put it in my cart. I ultimately, um, you know, I was on the edge about it. I ultimately decided not to get it. It probably would have been a good decision to buy, but also, you know, if it's not something I'm super passionate about, Probably a good decision not to buy. It just depends. I, as most resellers, have a fairly decent sized death pile. So if I'm not super into the item, I don't need to add it to the stack because it'll just sit there for a while and not serve, uh, you know, any direct purpose. So, or any, you know, I'm not going to make any money off it, you know, right away. This one I did decide to get. This is a nice, clean um, Nike, Nike T St. Louis Cardinals t-shirt, kind of like the 70s um, style. Um, I love that. We went to a Cardinals game this uh, when we were picking across America. So, And I wanted to do the tourist thing and get myself something in the St. Louis Cardinals shop, but their cheapest hats, I think, were like $35. And I'm so used to getting all my stuff at the bins or at a thrift store. And, you know, an $8 hat is, you know, an insane price for me. So when they're asking, I would have paid it if I loved the hat, but um, I ended up not getting anything. So now when I see good quality stuff of these sports teams, it just inspires me even more to buy them. Because, you know, even if you sell them at $15, $20, people are saving, you know, getting it at half the price of retail, especially when they're in good condition like that. That shirt I don't think has ever been used, or if it has, it's been very well taken care of, so it's like new condition. If you all haven't heard of the Deseret Industry, it's a West Coast thrift store chain owned by the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, a.k.a. the Mormons. Um, it's in Idaho, California a little bit, all over Utah, a little bit of Nevada, I think Arizona too, maybe Denver, maybe that area, and a little bit of California, which I might have already said. This Chris, uh, Chris Stapleton shirt was good. I think they wanted $4 for it. I thought this could be like a $10 or $12 shirt, but I did find one that sold for $25 best offer, I think, and it was free shipping. So I'm definitely going to pick that up. That was a pretty solid find. I say it all the time, but it's, it's a true fact in reselling. You make the money in the buy at $4. Let's say that, you know, took an offer. It sold for like 15 or 16 bucks. I'm going to make money. Or if I even want to sell it cheaper, I could still make money. I'm a huge Mighty Ducks fan, especially the old school movie. I love the movie. This is a new, brand new, very ironic that I would find this, a brand new Mighty Ducks shirt. Definitely going to pick that up. It should flip for, you know, I'd say, I think they only want like four or five for it. So it should flip for at least, you know, two and a half, maybe three times what I'm paying on it. Hopefully even a little bit more. This shirt right here is pretty cool. It's a Joker shirt, but it's a little bit different. It's actually a Joker shirt referring to the Six Flags amusement park ride, the Joker ride. So it's cool. It's a Six Flag, uh, Flags Joker, you know, roller coaster ride shirt. I believe that's where they have that roller coaster, the Joker roller coaster. This is nice. They have a uh, pricing all over the place. I'm probably taking a little bit of a chance on that, but I love the graphics on it so much. I'm going to get it and put it on eBay. This is a uh, $4. I love the Simpsons graphic on it. Um, this is going to go in our whatnot auction. There's a little bit of a risk when I put stuff like this through whatnot because I'm starting it at $2. It could flop and I could lose money. Hopefully I'll make, you know, eight, nine, ten dollars It's good filler. And as long as I make a few bucks, I'd consider it a success because it's going to be a quick sale, something I'll probably put in this upcoming week. But, um, you know, I could put that on eBay and maybe make a, a few more dollars, but that's going to go on whatnot. I dig that. It's all about, you know, selling stuff that you like. There's a thousand different shirts out there that are worth money. Um, I'm kind of focusing on the things that I enjoy, that I like to sell. Um, I've been doing this long enough. That helps keep me motivated and keep me interested in what I'm doing. This shirt's awesome. Ride the Lightning Metallica. This is not vintage, but it's not brand new. This is a, a 2007 shirt. This, I'm going to double check on eBay, but this more than likely is going to go on our whatnot, our Monday uh, whatnot auction. Um, once again, I think it's like four bucks. I think this will do more than four bucks, but it's possible it could go for two or three dollars. And when you're doing an auction, you got to take, you know, calculated or educated risks. So next up is another Simpsons shirt. I didn't like the logo on this one as much as the other one. So I didn't dig it that much, so I decided not to pick that one up. That was just a gut call. I like the other graphic better. That stuff's, you know, kind of a little bit of a risk already because I could very well sell, sell that other shirt I just picked up for only a couple dollars and I'm spending four bucks. But I want to at least pick, uh, you know, a design and a some artwork that I dig. 
Like I was saying a little bit earlier, sunny Las Vegas inspired me to come back out to these Goodwills and look through these shirt racks. He was finding all sorts of cool Hawaii brand shirts uh, the other day when he was, I don't know if he's at this one or the other one here in Vegas, but this is High Life. It looks to be a Hawaii brand. I'm not super familiar with it. I looked some comps up and they're kind of all over the place. Um, I may or may not end up getting that one, but um, this one's also pretty cool. This is one that if it was at the bins and I was paying, you know, a quarter or 50 cents for it, I would pick it up for the auction because I think it would definitely do a couple dollars, but um, I got to pay like three bucks here. So I ultimately ended up um, putting that one back. This one is another band shirt. I'm not as familiar with asking uh, Alexandria. So I ended up putting that one back. I really do believe as a reseller, you have to be willing to grow and learn new things. And sometimes you're going to push against that because you're kind of stuck in the ways that you're familiar with and the stuff that you enjoy reselling. And trust me, if you've watched the last couple years of my video, uh, my videos that I've made, I've struggled a great deal with this because I want to stick with the stuff that I love the most. And, and I think as a main focus, I think that's important to kind of stick with stuff that you love the most. But as you're trying to expand and, and make a couple extra dollars here and there, I think it's important that you push yourself, that you get into other areas and that you get excited about it. Watch other resellers, you know, that are experts in that niche. I've been following a lot of people who are doing clothing reselling at the bins and at the thrift stores. Flip the World TX is awesome. Thrift a Life, great, great stuff. And there's plenty of other uh, resellers out there in the clothing niche, plenty of others that do amazing, amazing work. Um, Ginger Marvin, they do a lot of clothing as well. Check them out for sure if you guys have time.